on this webisode of Mythbusters. That's 100% wacky right there. We've got more lunar lunacy for you. Down here I look like one of the aliens in Close Encounters. On the show, Cary Grant and Tori cleaned up two myths involving vacuums. All right, close the door. Let's see if we can pull our feelings out. First, they busted the boot print theory that in a vacuum, you can't leave a clean and stable yeah. impression. Take that! Yeah! In your face, conspiracy theorists. Then they tackled and busted the flag-flapping myth. Oh, it's moving a lot. <laughs> it's moving a lot. Hey, it's moving a lot. It's moving a lot. It's I mean, still moving. That's awesome. There you go. In a vacuum, the lack of air resistance means movement of the flagpole causes the flag to flutter with what looks like a breeze. But what we didn't get time to show you was an experiment added to the agenda by Carrie, one inspired by some famous footage from the Apollo 15 mission. The really cool thing about a vacuum is that since there's no air resistance, something as light as a feather is going to drop the same rate as something as heavy as a hammer. So I should be able to put these in the vacuum and see them both hit the ground at the same time if it is a true vacuum. In my left hand, I have a, a feather. In my right hand, a hammer. Commander David Scott carried out his famous test to prove Galileo's hypothesis that all objects are affected equally by gravity. And as Carey explained, with no air resistance, they should fall at the same speed. How about that? I said Mr. Galileo was correct. So as a control to confirm visually they're working with a vacuum, Carey rigs a clamp to drop them at the same time. And when the guys arrived at NASA in Alabama, the first test they set up for was the hammer and feather rig. It's good enough. It's not like it's rocket science. I don't think you can say that around here. Well, I guess you're right. The team seals the chamber, but for this control, they don't create a vacuum. Atmospheric pressure in three, two, one. Cool. The hammer right. hit first. Perfect. So the laws of physics still apply. I dropped the hammer and the feather at atmospheric pressure exactly at the same time. Hammer hit first, feather glided down and hit last. So after the air is removed from the chamber, Carrie is ready to repeat the drop. In three, two, one. Yeah! That is so cool. Yep, when there's no air resistance or drag, all objects are equally affected by gravity and fall at the same rate. So we do indeed have a vacuum. Of course, as most of you know, it's not a true vacuum, which in reality is impossible to create. But we did get a partial vacuum of around 10 to the minus 6 tor, a good approximation of what you'd find on the moon. And for more equally bizarre trivia on the missions to the moon, here's Adam and Jamie. You know, when most people think about moon landings, they think about Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin in 1969. I know, they don't remember Michael Collins, the third astronaut on Apollo 11, who had to stay in the ship. And also, what about the fact that the Apollo program lasted from 1961 to 1975? Included over 38 astronauts, 12 of whom actually walked on the moon. The only time human beings have actually walked on another world as far as we know.